So my name is Colin Frost, C-O-L-I-N-F-R-O-S-T. Uh, I'm Staff Sergeant and I'm with the 18th Civil Engineer Squadron, EOD. Grew up in Greenbrook, New Jersey. So uh, today's training was all about um, post-blast analysis. So we took various sizes of ordnance and we also did demolition on them. And then after we did demolition on them, we'd walk up there and see the after effects of the uh, explosives and see the patterns that they would create in the ground to identify where they would come from. So their point of origin so that we could detect enemy fire. And then we'd also do RSPs at the end of the day. So we could see how we could disarm ordnance in the real world. Uh, it's true that we're different branches, but EOD goes across the entire spectrum of the military. There is no uh, unit that's specific. Uh, we all go to the same school. So it's pretty much, there's no real problems with uh, congruency there. But uh, that being said, they do have a lot more experience with us uh, than us for the fact of post-blast analysis um, and inerting and stuff like that seeing it disassembled so there's a lot of knowledge that we can gain from them so it is definitely a help being out here with them and they uh, their personal experience i haven't deployed so their real world knowledge of seeing this a hundred times over and over again uh it really shows when they are explaining it to us it's caliph Eirich, k-a-l-i-f-f last name is e-y-r-i-c-h and the platoon sergeant for second platoon eod company Alliance Nebraska. Today's training, we basically focused on post blast analysis for conventional ordnance, as well as uh, render safe procedures for uh, conventional ordnance that we may find uh, US or foreign on the battlefields. Uh, the Marines went out there today, and basically we set up shots where it would be mimic as close as possible to what it would actually look, actually look like if it was um, fired from a mortar or an IDF from improvised rocket launchers. Um, placed them in the ground. Uh, the Marines went out there. We uh, walked them through how to do the things they needed to do and uh, looking for frag, um, shot craters, uh, the direction the, the, uh, the rounds came from and how to, how to conduct that type of um, crater analysis. Uh, actually, yes. Uh, the weather, for one, is, is rough, especially in the summer months. Uh, the humidity here is really bad, so we got to make sure the guys are staying hydrated. Um, logistically, it's a little bit more intensive uh, as far as planning purposes, um, getting, getting the proper trucks that we need. Um, if they're not supporting ops already, um, we have Marines that are across the whole Pacific AO. So getting out here and, and figuring out who's going to be on the range that day or who's going to be TAD is one of the challenges that we have here because we're so busy. So real world today, for especially for the post-blast analysis, uh, say a base came under mortar fire or attack um, and the techs were called out to dispose of a UXO that may have not have gone off. Um, they can identify the type of UXO that was found in being fired by the enemy. Um, they can analyze the, um, the blast crater like as you were, we, we were doing today to figure out and possibly find a, a point of origin where the mortar round may have been fired from, a direction of travel, uh, what type of round it was, uh, the soil composition, what kind of explosives were being used. And also they uh, will find the frag that was in the craters and that kind of identify and piece together maybe the size and type of ordnance it is as well. Render safe procedures as far as uh, from an EOD standpoint is basically making around uh, safe to transport or safe to move to a safer location if need be. Uh, sometimes there's fuses that are, aren't able to be moved at all due to the hazard with them. So the render safe procedures is basically the safest way to, to take care of that round in its place. We use protective works. If you have to sandbag around it to make sure it doesn't do any collateral damage to the uh, area around it if it needs to be saved. And it basically just takes the, the most dangerous part of that fuse or that, that ordnance item out of the equation so that we can move the rest of it to a safe area. Uh, Staff Sergeant Joshua Firth, F-I-R-T-H. Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team Leader. My hometown's from Seaside, Oregon. So today uh, we were up here doing post-blast analysis of ordnance items as well as uh, render safe procedures or RSPs. And I was today my primary purpose was just to teach these guys how to do a back azimuth of a round after it impacts and detonates as well as fragmentation analysis and just general post-blast information. Um, right now it's mostly our younger guys, so newer EOD techs. Most of them haven't been through a formal post-blast analysis training. 
And same thing for the Air Force guys. Two of them are pretty new to the field, so this is their first real experience with, besides just being told how to do it, actually getting down into the dirt and doing it themselves. With my style of teaching, not particularly, I try to break it down just to a user level so that these guys understand. And I'm, if anything's not clear, I try to make it a point to reiterate it to the, to the best of my knowledge to break it down for them. Uh, training today went really well. Uh, weather was really, really nice to be able to deal with. The terrain is, you know, an obstacle you have to deal with no matter what, so it gave them a bit more of a real-world expectation instead of it just being like laboratory conditions. So the Render Safe Procedures, or RSPs, that's a method we use to actually make the ordnance item no longer function as designed. So if you have an area that cannot withstand a high-order detonation, we can't just blow it up where it lies. We have the ability to make it so it's not going to function that way so that we can move it. With the post-blast analysis, that's our forensic gathering to determine uh, possible point of origin for fired projectiles, as well as with, through fragmentation and crater analysis, we're able to determine the approximate size or type of round that was fired in order to get better intel to find out where it's being fired from or what's actually being used against friendly forces. So today our uh, ordinance that we did post-blast analysis on was 60 millimeter HE mortars, 81 millimeter HE mortars, as well as a 155 millimeter howitzer shells, also HE. So they were, had a chance to see the difference in fragmentation so that they're able to learn like certain frag types and shapes to determine what type of ordnance item came from it, as well as crater analysis, seeing the different sizes of craters that different ordnance items are going to be able to give them. And they can use that information to tie in with foreign ordnance as well, because much of it's the same size or near the same size, so they can have an approximate size to go off of a reference point for. So with the way that uh, our explosives are going, we're looking at a lot more safety for transportation, safety for storage and longevity. And those explosives are harder to initiate under traditional means for the EOD tech themselves. So you do the applied physics of explosive theory to actually impart more energy onto the ordnance item itself in order to get that main charge to go.